Today, I'm making a macrame wall hanging with fringe and color. Some assembly required. It's been a little while since I've done any macrame and that seemed like a good enough excuse. So I thought that I would make something kind of fringy. I like the idea of those ones that kind of come down in a swoopy kind of shape in the middle. I've never really done any of that successfully. And I thought that I would add some kind of a color using liquid watercolors. So let's see how it goes. For this wall hanging, I'm using a stick about 23 inches long. You could also use a dowel. I just have a ton of these guys. I also have a roll of tape, 10 cords, 61 inches long, but I do wish they were a little bit longer, maybe around 78 inches. I also have two 71 inch cords and a whole bunch of 41 inch cords. I ended up using 64, but you might use a few more or a few less, depending on your variations on the design. First, I'll be using my set of 10 cords, the ones that I could have made a little bit longer. I'll be attaching these to the middle of the stick with lark's head knots. I think that this is easier to do before you tape it down, so I'll do that. You fold each cord in half, trying to make them even, and here's how I make the lark's head knots. Pass the folded end under the stick and bring it up and over to the front. Now you have a little loop. Pull the loose ends, like that big long tail, through the loop and make it nice and snug. When you put on the next knot, you can move it over next to the first, or you can wait and do all of that later. Then I'll do the rest. I'm using 10 cords, but you could make this part wider or skinnier. After I get them all on, I'll just center the whole block right in the middle of the stick and tape the stick down onto my table. I want to make kind of a chevron shape with these. I'm taping the cords down so they at least have a chance at being even and I'll be making a diagonal half hitch knots from each edge down into the middle. So the outermost cords will be what we tie the knots onto. I'll get the right side cords out of the way and tape this angled cord down. And now I start from the left and move in towards the middle. So if the first cord is going to be the angle, the second will be what we use to make our first knot. Take the end and push it from right to left behind your angled cord. Pull that one snug and then repeat the same movement again with that same cord. Two wraps make one knot. Pull that one nice and tight too. Now do the same thing with the next cord. on all the way to the middle. Try to make sure the cords at the top are not too loose. Sometimes I have to go back and adjust them. You want them to hang nice and straight when you're finished. Now that the left side is finished, we'll do the same basic thing on the right. We'll get our first angled cord out of the way. Don't need that. And tape this one down at a matching angle, trying to make a pretty even chevron shape. Then, just like before, we'll start with the second cord from the edge. This time, you pass it behind the angled cord from left to right, tighten it up, and then around again. Yay! Now, again, 
keep going until the center. Naughty, naughty, not, not. Now I've reached the middle and the two angles don't quite match up, so I'll just adjust some of my knots until they look a little more even. Better. Now, to join the two sides, you'll use the left hand angle cord to make a half hitch knot on the right hand angle cord. There! Now you have one row of your chevron. You could stop there or add as many more rows as you like. I'm going to make two rows, one more right underneath these. I will do just the same thing again for my second row. This time it's a little easier because you just practiced making a bunch of these knots and you don't have to worry about keeping the cords nice and tight above the knots, which I wasn't really all that successful at up there on the right anyway. I've decided that I want to make another chevron down here, so I've taped the cords down right below the last one in an effort to keep the spacing even. So I plan to do exactly the same thing as the first one. This is definitely a part that can be customized. You can start your chevrons lower or higher, add more rows to each one, make them skinnier or wider, and make as many as you want. But remember, the more knots you plan to make, the longer you'll need to make your cords. As I mentioned earlier, I also want my wall hanging to have some fringe. I'm going to attach two more cords up onto the stick, one on each side, and I will try to space them evenly. They're going to meet in the middle, making a half circle kind of a shape. I'm going to measure about a foot down the cord and start attaching my 41 inch cords to it with lark's head knots, trying to kind of fill that whole foot. For a different look, I'm going to try to make them the opposite way that I usually do, like over the top and around the back, and then stick the cords through. It leaves kind of a ridge along the bottom edge, so I thought that might be interesting. And here's another one. Then just keep going until you've filled up the cord to the point that you measured. My big long cord ended up needing 32 cords attached, but it depends on how big you want your half circle and how tightly you squeeze your cords together. Not quite long enough, I'm going to have to cut some more cords and then also a bunch for the other side. Here we are, that should do it. I'm attaching the same number of cords for the right hand side that I did on the left. And then I can just adjust the spacing so each side is the same length. So I want them to be even. I would like to cut my fringe to all the same length so that it looks kind of nice at the bottom, but I think it will be easier to do that before I attach my two strands in the center. Hmm. I think if I tape the cord down up at the top of my little background board, I should be able to smooth the fringe out and cut it evenly across the bottom. Okay, so it's not quick and easy, but it works one by one. I'm putting the tape at the bottom of the fringe so I can try to make the other side the same length. Ta-da! I mean, it's close enough for me. It doesn't have to be perfect because it will hang at a curve anyway, but I think at least this way it'll be a little bit less jagged. Hey, it's time to join the two side cords in the middle. I think the best way will be to tie a square knot around the two cords hanging down from the point of your chevron. But if you have a different method, you could certainly try that too. I'm taking one cord from each side for my two working cords, and I am tying them around these two middle cords from the chevron part. I'll tape the middle two cords down right above where I want the knot, and then we'll get tying. Take your right hand cord and bring it left under the middle cords and over the left hand cord. Now, 
take the left and bring it right, over the middle two and under the right hand cord. Now pull that knot tight right up to your tape. For the second step, start with the left hand cord and send it to the right, under the middle cords and over the right. And then the right will go over the middle and under the left. Finally, pull that one tight and your square knot is done. It sounds complicated, but with a little practice, square knots get a lot easier. Now, let me straighten this fringe out so we can see how we did. Not bad. I'll tie an extra cord up here to the stick so we can see how it hangs. Ooh, cool, that looks pretty nice. If you like it like this, way to go, you're finished. But I cannot leave well enough alone, and I'm going to add some color. I put some scrap paper down to protect my table, but then I remembered how messy my watercolors are, and I added a few more layers. There we go, that should do it. All right, I taped the macrame down so it stays still, and I'm going to spray it with water. I think, in theory, this will help the watercolor spread throughout the whole cord. You could probably dip dye this whole thing, but I don't have a great place to do that. So I'm seeing if this works for those of us that need an alternative. I feel like a little extra wet can't hurt, but I could be wrong. I'm sure we'll see. I'm using washable liquid watercolors in blue, and turquoise blue. Kind of a theme going on. So I poured my colors into some plastic containers. I found a few different brushes that probably should work, but I think I'll start with the big one. That seems the fastest. I'm just layering on a bunch of watercolor at a time and spraying along the way so it spreads and soaks into the cords. I'm adding more and more layers so that the white of the cord doesn't show through. I may be using too much, but I want it to be really blue. I'm leaving a little bit of blank area between the two colors to see if maybe they can spread out a little bit as they dry. Now I'll hang it up to dry and let's see what happens. So the reason that I used so much paint was that if you just paint the front of these, the back ends up being kind of blue. But what I did later on, while I wasn't filming, is I put on some gloves because these watercolors totally stained my fingers, but then wash off later, just to protect my hands. And then you just kind of roll them around in your fingers. That kind of squeezed the paint through the cord so that the whole thing got colored. I notice that this band right here is definitely not as light as it was, maybe because I was hanging it to dry and gravity sort of seeped it downwards, but I'm not mad at it. I think that it looks kind of cool. I mean, you can still see that it's lighter, so it's at least another little section. It's interesting. It did seep up a little bit more than I wanted. Maybe if that's not what you're looking for, you could start a little bit further down. Keep in mind that the color will spread. But I think that that looks pretty cool. Another thing that I would change if I could measure better is that I would make these cords, the chevron cords, a little bit longer. This is why I was telling you that I would, I would make them longer if I could. I made, I cut them kind of straight because they were jaggedy and weird, but if they came all the way down to the bottom, that would look a lot cooler. You don't see them, but I see them. Uh, definitely the liquid watercolors are a good way to color your macrame. If you like colorful macrame, I do because my walls are white, so I feel like they need a little pop of color rather than off-white. I'm glad that I tried a little bit of macrame today. I'm always slightly disappointed in my macrame, but I do think that I like it better with the color. It could be that I'm not using the kind of cord that I should be using. I mean, it's just regular macrame cord. 
So I'm gonna just keep on trying to make it different ways until I love it. I like this. So I'm getting closer. <laughs> And there you have it, that's the project. And I think that you should try it, especially if you like color. <laughs> if you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of video and you're not subscribed yet, you can do that right underneath the video. Click the all notifications button so you don't miss anything. Also, I have a macrame playlist and you can check that out while you wait for the next video. New videos come out on Tuesdays and Saturdays, so stay tuned for something exciting and until then, be awesome, and I'll see you on the next video.